Okay, let's start with lesson 3.9. Um, in section 3.9, we'll be dealing with linear relationships and lines of best fit. We'll be going back to examine some of the work we've done with plotting points and making lines. Um, at the middle of the page, on page 409, <clears throat> we're going to start where it says class. In lesson 3.7, we examined the relationship between calories burned and weight loss. Well, we need to, to study data to model the exact nature of the relationship. You were probably able to figure out that the two quantities were are related in some way. There are many quantities that seem like they might be related, but it's not clear if they really are. Or if so, how? So it would be nice to have a way to study relationships, or if they even exist, between data sets. Fortunately, the folks who program spreadsheets and graphing calculators have done most of the heavy lifting for us. Still, in our continuing quest to not rely on technology more than our brains, it's good to think about how and when quantities are likely to be related in some way. So we're going to look at a couple examples and just determine if we think maybe there's a relationship between them or not. So I want you to decide if you think these are likely to be related and explain why or why not. 1A says the dollar spent by a politician candidate, oops, let's try that again. 1A, dollar spent by a political candidate and the number of votes he gets. Um, yeah, that seems related, right? More, more money, more votes. All right, I agree. I think they are related. <clears throat> um, B says, is there a relationship between the num the uh, uh, that went away? Is there a relationship between an adult test subject's height and their IQ? Mm, no, right? The taller you are, you're not smarter. Yeah, I hope not. I'm pretty short. <laughs> Turning to page four ten. Part C says a person's height and their shoe size. Uh, yeah. Big people have big feet. Yes, I would agree with that statement. Maybe even more for stability and stuff like that, right? <clears throat> That's a good point. And Part D says the age of a car and its resale value. Um, yeah, I would say the older a car is, the less money you want to want to pay for it. Absolutely. That's why they're recommending buying a car that's at least a year old because it loses value very, very quickly. All right. So now we've got a chart here that gives us some information about the relationship between the total fat in a fast food burger and the total calories. So the, for standard hamburger, a variety of fast food restaurants, it's giving us the fat and the calories. We're going to draw a scatter plot based on this table. Remember that when drawing a scatter plot, we are just estimating where the points are. We're not super exact but you should be close. You should be in the right ballpark. So for example, to plot a point for McDonald's, I'm going to plot a point at 9 across the x-axis because grams of fat are on the bottom and 250 on the y-axis because that's where calories are. So 9 is between 8 and 10 and then 250 is right on the graph. Do this for every other point, 12 and 290. 290 is almost to 300. 8 and 230. That would be under 250. 12 and 310. That's going to be above 300. Don't make pretty circles either. 17 and 470. 17 is between 16 and 18. 470 is between 450 and 500. 15 and 310. 15 is between 14 and 16. 310 again is a little above 300. 7 and 140. 7 is between 6 and 8. 140 is just below 150. 14 and 350. So 14 all the way up to 350. That one's right on the intersection. 14 and 310. That is up just a little bit above 300. 19 and 390 is between 18 and 20 and almost to 400. So that's roughly what the scatter plot should look like. Number three on page 411 asks us to draw a line of best fit. A line of best fit is defined, did they define it here for me? Yeah, it's a, and the thing to point out is that they do say it's important to recognize that the line of best fit may not even go through any of the points, but it should be a line that represents the points that you plotted. This is going to be rough. Yours may be different than mine. They're all going to be slightly different. 
<clears throat> that's an approximate line of best fit. Again, yours may be slightly different. It's okay, we're gonna be estimating. All right. Number four then asks us to identify two points on the line. I'm gonna use two points that are on my line. You are welcome to use two points that are on your line and see how they work. We should get close to the same answer, but it will not be exactly the same if we use different points. Two points that were on my line were six comma 150 and 12 comma 300. So the first thing we want to do is find the slope between those points. To find the slope, we're going to subtract the y values. Does not matter which one you start with, but make sure whichever y you start with, you pick its x to go first. I'm going to start with 300 minus 150. Now, which x has to go first, the 12 or the 6? The 12 has to go first because it went with the 300 minus the other one. Go ahead and calculate this, and it gives us a slope of 25. Now, that's the slope. They're asking us to find the equation. So I do need to go put these numbers into point slope form. I am going to go ahead and use this point in my point slope form. Hopefully I have room to write it all on here. I'm going to do y minus the y value, which is 300, equals the slope, 25, times x minus the x value, which was 12. We do want to rewrite this so we can get it into slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form is y equals an equation. So I'm going to keep my y minus 300. I'm going to distribute the 25 through, so 25x minus 300. And then we're going to add 300 to both sides. And we get y equals 25x plus 0. Depending on where you drew your line, you're going to have different values. You probably, for the um, slope, will have something between 20 and 30. And the y-intercept is just going to depend on where your line went through. So we're going to have to look and see what it actually turns out to be. So because there's so many discrepancies when we do these by hand, it would be nice to be able to use our graphing calculator to calculate this for you and be a little more exact than what we can do by hand. So we're going to get out the graphing calculator and follow the steps at the bottom of page 411. And hoping this works to do the